Hey there y'all, it's been a while since y'all have seen the all track, so I figured I'd provide an update on it. I figured now was a good time to make an update because it's been two weeks and 1500 miles since I got it back from the dealership. So in this video I just wanted to make as quick of a run through as possible about what happened to the all track and my plans for it going forward. Sixty three thousand three hundred forty one miles and I just got home from somewhere so the camera turned off. Alright, so now that we're so now that we're inside, I just wanted to explain what happened to the all track. So I made a reel uh or posted it about a month ago now where I have the all track making this really loud mechanical noise whenever it locks and the EPC light was on which is bad news if any of the engine lights are on the check engine or the EPC and it was having a hard time driving this just cropped out of nowhere on June 1st and I basically had the car parked at home for the second and the third so I finally drove it over to the dealer on June 4th because the local dealerships are awful with appointment scheduling. They wouldn't be able to take me till about this time or a couple weeks later, even though I had a very urgent issue that basically made the all track undrivable. So I knew something was really wrong with the engine. So I took it over on Saturday the 4th. I dropped it off at one of the local dealers. And while I was there, I was like, hey, I have another stain, as you can see by the water line that goes in the loop there. I have another water stain in the headliner. It was the same dealer that gave me a new headliner around New Year's. And I told them, please take a look at the engine. So it took like a week for them to look at the engine, see what was going on. They told me that I had turbo failure, which would be a several thousand dollar repair if I wasn't under warranty. Like the part alone, as I saw on the paperwork, was over a thousand dollars. So very serious issue that went on. I had an oil change that went poorly for 60,000 miles back in May. Basically, they didn't screw oil on, and I had a low oil level. So that's what that stain in the driveway is that I showed in that Buick Encore video was the fact the car was leaking oil. But I went three weeks after they fixed it, no issues. And then I had this turbo issue crop out of nowhere. So very freaky issue. The only good thing I could really say about that dealer visit was that they replaced my shift knob under recall free of charge so not going to be throwing shade in this video i'm just explaining what happened to the all track but everything went south when i realized at the end of june i gave them the car june 4th my scheduled appointment was june 8th they didn't start looking at it until about june 10th well it's the end of june almost it's like june 22nd and I think I'm about to get the car home. The turbo is finally fixed and they tell me that they won't cover the headliner under warranty because apparently the drains in these panoramic roofs are something they're supposed to be taken care of during routine service or taken care of on your own. So because I park under all these trees right here because I am a very special guest who my compromise is parking outside. I'm getting stuff in my sunroof and it's like I park under flowers. I know a lot of other people park under trees. It's the south. So they were trying to blame me for my sunroof issues, even though the sunroof is always closed or I just keep it in a tilt position. And I know I sometimes have leaves appear on the roof here, but absolutely no reason for that to be blamed on me. And they were trying to charge me $1,500 for it. So I told them, please don't go forward with that. Y'all have already had the car for almost three weeks. I just want the car home. So I got the all track home on June 22nd. So timeline, June 1st, serious problem that prevented drivability. June 4th, gave the car to the dealership. Driving the Canyon for a little bit. Had that Encore from June 6th until June... 15th drove the canyon the rest of the time and then i got the all track back june 22nd so june 4th to june 22nd all track was not at the house but it was not drivable since june 1st so three weeks of issues well now we're here at the end of june the all track is back i'm driving it around i have some friends with me i did a delivery order i 
commuted to work in the city and back on June 23rd and it's making this blowing noise like the defrost. It's basically making that noise whenever I accelerate above two or 3,000 RPM. And as you know with these DSG transmissions, they're very hesitant at low speeds, even if they're working right. So you kind of have to floor it to get up to speed and it would be making that defrost noise whenever that happened. So Friday, Friday afternoon, June 24th, I had a half day from work and I was out about to do some deliveries and I floored it really hard multiple times and both my check engine and EPC lights came on again. And I'm like, wow, the dealer was already messing with me and now I have these issues again. So took the all track to that dealer, I told them like, really, what's going on? But first I went to the dealer that was right there. So there's a couple different dealers nearby. I took it to another dealer I'd never been to before for service and told them, look, I'm worried that something's gonna be happening because I have this blowing sound. So I was supposed to bring it by on June 25th and I was driving around after that that my engine lights came on. So I went to the first dealership and I told them, look, this is unacceptable. You know, on my car for three weeks, Y'all gave it back with a dead battery. That's a part of the story I forgot to share. It was a dead battery and they gave it back to me with an issue a two days and 200 miles later, which was ridiculous. So I told them, look, I'm going to this other dealer to have them check out what's going on. So I gave it to the other dealer the evening of Friday the 24th. So driving the Canyon again for the last week of June and I got the car back from the last dealer. There was some back and forth with it. It was basically the car was gone there for a week just to realize they had to screw something on correctly. So there was something that wasn't screwed in when they were doing the turbo repair down in the engine at the first dealership. So that's all it was, but it took them a week because they were worried that my APR, APR plus was gonna have issues with the warranty. I was flagging the the TD1 code, which is a very serious Volkswagen code that basically says this car's had some modifications and may be voided under warranty. So no dealer had ever notified me that I had a TD1 flag on my all track. And now they were telling me, oh, you've got a TD1 flag. So they were going through all that. And then they were looking at the sunroof and they're like, look, we fixed the engine. And it's like, I've had this car gone for a month, basically. I had those 200 miles that I drove, but literally, not even 300 miles put on the all track the entire month of June because of all these issues. And I normally put at least 2,500 miles on the car a month. Like as I started this video off with, I've put 1,500 miles on it in two weeks. I drive a lot. So for this car to be just put away like that for all that time, and not to mention the first dealer not letting me have a courtesy car because they wouldn't cover it for deliveries. So I had to drive the Canyon for deliveries too. A uh, very big mess going on in that situation. So. All track finally came home on July 2nd and they didn't do the headliner yet. I'm going to try to schedule something with that. I may be taking a very massive road trip for work in a month and plan on taking the all track along. So there's some other stuff I might need to do, like replace the tires. The Baron Breverus tires I got in June, 2021 are already put pretty flat, even though I've only put 33,000 miles on them. and need some brakes because I've had that squeaking at low speeds. That's what they determined at the second dealership is that I might just need new brakes overall, which I could probably find some aftermarket solutions that would be much better than the OEM. And honestly, in this time, like mid to late June, I was actually looking at other vehicles to replace the all track. I was starting with the bigger end, like Ram 1500 Laramie, F-150 Lariat and Platinum. And those were way too expensive for the position I'm in. Like I'm living at home. I'm, I'm not making 200 grand a year. If I was, I'd be out on my own and probably driving something nicer than the all track. But I, once I found a car that was more realistic, which I'm keeping under wraps, because if I do seriously pursue, this would probably be the option I'd go. I went out and looked at some, even had a talk with a dealership in Maryland about getting one. And then the all track came home and I realized, you know, this is a much more viable solution. I have less than 10,000 miles of warranty coverage now, but I'm just excited to have the all track back. It was gone the whole time. The Canyon's a nice truck, but it's a lot more cumbersome to maneuver. It's slower, starts with a key, have to push the button on the fob to 
lock and unlock the doors, which is challenging when you're stopping and going as much as I am. But all tracks from behaving pretty well. I've had some mild hesitations. Of course, the brake squeaks, whatever, the car chirping some once you turn it off. But that's all stuff that had May 2022 and earlier. There's been no new engine issues or any of that. Okay, here's a quick look at those tires as you see especially the front ones here looking kind of flat now i believe they were at 5 30 seconds a couple months ago so they're in the warning of yeah yeah man you really need to replace these already Alrighty, well, I hope y'all enjoyed that video. I'm sorry it turned out kind of long. I just wanted to provide an update since y'all have been sticking around since I got this car new in May 2020. I just wanted to explain as best as I could why it was gone for so long. Also explaining why I had that Encore and while I was driving the Canyon as well. So hope all that got taken care of. If y'all have any questions for me, please just let me know. If you want to say, Chris, why did you make this choice? You should have kept the RAV4. You can completely say that too. I've gotten that a lot. So Thanks y'all so much for watching and have a great day.